Elden Ring is a masterpiece. It's the kind of game that doesn't come every year. A game like this comes perhaps once in a decade. Elden Ring is not perfect, nor does it really claim to be. In fact, there are a few things that I'm going to point out during this review that are not perfect, not yet. It is no coincidence, though, that I have chosen the background music for this introduction that I have. This game, Elden Ring, at the moment I stepped out into the lands between made me feel the same way that I felt when I was a kid and I stepped into Hyrule for the first time. That sense of awe, that sense of grand landscape before me, and a world to explore, that is something that Elden Ring has done better than perhaps any other video game ever. So to start off, I'm gonna say that I will try to avoid spoilers as best as possible. This is not gonna be a spoiler-free review, but hopefully I won't be doing any major spoilers. Um, if I do have any major spoilers, then I will let you know um, ahead of time, tell you spoiler alert, all that fun stuff. Um, I'll have multiple warnings, so if you miss those, it's all your fault. Um, okay, so here's how the review is going to be divided up. First, I'll start with gameplay, then I'll move on to the story, and then I'll finish up with um, all of the other stuff like music, um, some updates that they've had already, and I'll talk about some other random stuff there too. But then I'll also wrap it up, uh, and I'll tell you what my score is, at least for now. Okay, let's get started. From the moment you press new game, you will be bombarded with choices. The good news is, unlike in previous or some previous FromSoft titles, you are never really punished for the choices you make, at least not in the long term. If you make any mistakes as far as your build is concerned, you can reset it. Almost unlimited times, not quite unlimited, but quite uh, should be enough times for most people. Um, it does take a while to get there, but luckily the first half of the game is very well balanced, very well polished, and frankly, you can pretty much get through it as long as you are high enough level. And just by exploring the game, you will get to be high enough level. From the very moment that you wake up in the world of Elden Ring, you will find yourself with very little guidance. And I think that is one of the game's biggest strengths, because although there is very little guidance, the fact that there is so many choices available to you makes it feel worth it to explore this beautiful, vast world. From the moment you wake up, again, you notice that there is almost no hand-holding in this game. Heck, the first bit of hand-holding the game gives you is a giant creature thrown up upon your body. You die almost immediately, and it's almost impossible to avoid the death. In fact, if you do avoid the death, you just die a few seconds later. So this game is not a game that holds your hand, and it is proud of that. In fact, just about the only guidance that the game really gives you right off the bat, besides notes that you might find in the ground, are notes from other players and also dead bodies from other players. So you can see how people died. Um, sometimes it's not as clear. Um, I know that at least in the first week when I was playing that a lot of the dead bodies were not really working. Um, I don't know if that's a result of the server being overloaded or what, but in general, you can't really rely on them to be accurate anyway. Sometimes people will kill themselves in weird ways on purpose to mislead you, and generally the From Software group of multiplayer people is not exactly the least toxic community I've ever seen, although they can also be very helpful sometimes as well. I would recommend not looking at things online and just doing whatever you feel like, whatever your heart um, commands you to do. You see that giant tree sentinel over there? You can fight him if you want. You can try. Watch me try. Okay, let's see how well it works out. I think I uh, succeed for at least a few seconds. Um... Wow, I actually survived for longer than I remembered. Wow, I've been dodging his heads really good. Good job, me. Uh, and I died almost immediately. Okay, and I'm dead. Yeah, there it is. Although it was my choice to do that, and frankly it wasn't the smartest choice, actually the consequences weren't too bad. But look, I revived right next to where I had died, which is the best part. Now I don't need to worry about, oh man, was that a bad choice? I can just do things. And in a world that is ripe for exploration, as the one in Elden Ring is, this is such an important feature because you don't want to be punished for being curious. This is something that I think FromSoft hopefully has learned from their previous games, because I always feel like in Dark Souls, it's 
not a good idea all the time to explore. I want to look through the whole world. I want to explore, but it's always a balance. It's always a trade-off. Is there a bonfire across the way? If there is, then I can explore. Is there not? Has it been 10 minutes since it's the last bonfire? Then, uh oh, I better not explore, otherwise I'm going to die. So exploration's always been kind of iffy in FromSoft games, and that's definitely not the case here. And I think one of my favorite gaming YouTubers, SkillUp, said it best in his review, or his overview, or his recommendation for the game, that this world does not feel like it's really meant to be explored. It feels like it's a world that's genuinely been ripped asunder. And you sometimes find secrets in this game, and you sometimes don't. Sometimes you find secrets in places that don't feel like they should have secrets. Sometimes you don't find anything in places that do have secrets. In fact, I would say maybe 90% of the time that you look, you don't find anything. But it's that 10% where you do find something that it really genuinely feels so satisfying. And for their part, FromSoft has also done a great job creating a world that's worth exploring, a world that has many secrets in it. And there are secrets that we are uncovering just now. There was a secret recently found that if you hit a wall 50 times, 50, five, zero times, eventually it will disappear. Um, don't know if this is intentional or not yet, uh, but I mean, obviously there's still a lot to this game that we have not finished exploring yet. And, and I feel like it will be the case for years to come. They also keep hiding and adding new, and new things in their new patches. I don't think we'll ever be lacking for content in this game, at least in the short term. Speaking on content and things to do in this game, the variety of weapons and equipment you can get in this game is overall very varied. Um, you'll find that you're not really lacking in options. Not to mention all the Ashes of War you can use to customize your items and give them different abilities. And just in general, what is left to you to customize and to and to develop. Again, it's your choice. You've got so many choices in this game. Um, and again, almost all the choices will end up being viable. Now, when I say viable, do I mean balanced? No. Oh no, I do not mean balanced. This game has got to be one of the least balanced open world type games I've ever seen. Almost everything in this game um, is viable, but almost none of it's good. There are only roughly two good builds right now in the game, and that's magic and um, bleeding. So magic has always been pretty OP in Souls games, and that's still the case here. I wouldn't say it's as OP as it usually is, um, although there are lots of videos on YouTube that would convince you otherwise. I think you'll notice this sort of um, unbalance if you play PvP, because when you play PvP, 90% of people are using katanas in some variation of a bleed build. Why are they doing this? Well, because it's, it's OP. And if you play bleed against um, enemies, any bosses, you'll notice that even a weak bleed weapon can absolutely destroy even the largest health bars on bosses. And bleed is fun to play as, it feels satisfying to play as, but at the same time though, I started off as a strength build and I felt like I couldn't do strength. It didn't matter which weapons I had, didn't matter how much strength I had. By the, by the time I got to the end game, I was no longer viable with that build. I had to switch basically to a dex build, to a bleed build in order to, to take on some of the harder content in the game. And I, and trust me, I looked, I went through all of the um, the guides online, I actually like tried to make my build viable. What I wanted the most in this game was to dual wield colossal greatswords. And I think that would be one of my dream builds in these kind of FromSoft games. And I did play it in like Dark Souls 2, for example. And in this game, it, it worked for like the beginning and middle content, but then when I got to the end game, it didn't work anymore. So why don't we talk about the end game content now? Um, and from now on, there are gonna be spoilers. So spoiler alert, if you don't want any spoilers in this game at all, um, stop watching here, skip ahead. Okay, skip ahead to like the last part because I'm gonna talk story after that. So. <laughs> Oh, Melania, I feel bad about beating you like the dead horse that you are at this point, but you are such a good example of what I'm about to talk about, which is the end game pigeonholing. The reason why she's such a good example is because most builds can't beat her without absolute luck or with so much skill that you should be developing these games, not playing them. 
I fought Melania 100 plus times, respect three times to end up beating her. The build that you saw previously was specifically made to cheese her after I spent a whole day losing to her. I'm not going to talk too much about her specifically, um, but by the time you get to her, the game has already begun to pigeonhole you into certain builds and to using certain items that it becomes most noticeable by the time you get to her. How about let's raise our hands. How many of you use the Mimic Tear Ash? How many use Katanas or Magic? How many of you use certain Ashes of War like Seppuku or Bloodhound Step? I probably described about 90% of the players that are playing Elden Ring now by endgame. It's one of my biggest complaints about the whole game at this point. In a game that is all about choice, build pigeonholing has got to be the biggest emphasis to the point of the game's design. People are always going to gravitate to the most OP builds in games like these, it's natural. What's not natural is a game giving you a million fun choices, but only having three be viable by endgame. I don't want these viable options to just be nerfed, I'm looking at you, Sword of Night and Flame, but rather I'd like to see other options buffed a bit or made more viable somehow. Even with Melania, I love her design, and I don't particularly hate so much about her, so I would love to see her just tweaked a bit, just to not be so absurd. Maybe make her undodgeable spin attack so it's not an instant kill, or at least dodgeable with the right timing. It's just hard to understand why it can't strength builds outside of using shields be viable with the right tweaking. Why can't dux builds other than katana builds be viable? How about faith builds or any other builds? I can admit to not having explored all of these in detail. Although I've put more than 140 hours into the game, I don't think I'll ever be able to explore all these builds myself. There's just too many of them. But it is an obvious problem with the game now, and I really hope that FromSoft is working to fix it. They've done a bit of tweaking so far, but unfortunately the core of the issue is still there, because so far they've chosen mostly to nerf things. Also, this guy exists for some reason, and only in the worst places possible. Like where clipping through walls and breaking the camera seemed to almost be on purpose. Seriously, From Software, what is up with this enemy type? These complaints, however, aren't a huge souring of the entire game, as the main issue is only really noticeable in the last third of the game or so, and mostly in optional content. I wouldn't have played through the game as many times as I have if it were all bad, bad and unbalanced. Quite the opposite, in the first two thirds of the game or so, it feels very balanced, to the point where I have high hopes that one day it will all be much better balanced and well implemented. So that's the end of gameplay. I'm now going to move into story. Um, and again, this is also a spoiler section, probably even more so than the last part. My fair consort eternal. If you have seen other From Software games, you're probably familiar with the storytelling displayed here in this game. A lot of the story is told through you, either through characters talking or through item descriptions, and it's also told to you through the world around you. Um, especially, you know, the further you get to the game, the more the world starts to almost implode around you, and it's always a bittersweet feeling to make progress in these games. In Elden Ring, there is a lot more for you to discover, and a lot less up to the imagination when compared to previous FromSoft games. And I mean this in the best way possible, as the story seems to be a real step up in general from previous games. Discovering the rot below the capital and the details of the curse, as well as learning the backstory of bosses and enemies is a fantastic joy in this game. There is way more show and less just telling in this game, which is honestly a complaint that I had about previous older From Software titles. Even in Bloodborne, one of my favorite games of all time, I feel like the story is a bit lacking at some points to where I want to know more about the world. I want to know more about what's going on, but it's just not available to find out more at all. Sometimes, you know, fan theories can make up for some of that, but I feel like we're going to be discovering more about the story of Elden Ring by just playing through the game more now and into the future. For a game like this, that is the ultimate compliment. I'm not sure if George R.R. R. Martin had much to do with this, but if he did, I would love to see his hand in the story moving forward as well. Big spoiler territory now, um, the endings are eh, very typical 5 minute cinematics like in previous From Software titles, and they're honestly let down with how much of the work some of the endings took to unlock. Doing the Dumb Eater's quest line or Fia's quest line is kind of a waste of time if you're hoping for a real ending variation, because it basically boils down to a color scheme. Remember Mass Effect 3's ending scandal? 
It's not quite that bad, as the story in this game is mostly linear and not really based on your choices, but it still feels pretty shallow. I hope that they explore more in future DLC and patches, and I would have loved some time to be Elden Lord. When you finish this game, it's either right before the ending or New Game Plus afterwards, so there's no chance to see the impact you becoming Elden Lord has on the world other than the super short cinematic. But, again, it is an otherwise small complaint when you experience the huge step up in the story content overall. I think the story is going to end up being kind of subjective depending on um, your own opinions on it, and I think that most people will in general enjoy the story of this game, so that's it. Now I'm going to give some other feedback, some things that weren't quite big enough for their own category but worth mentioning anyway. Um, number one is the sound effects and the music, which are overall quite good. Hearing the music when I first load up the game really gets me excited and ready to play it. The voice acting is also on top, as usual, in FromSoft games. Um, subjectively, I would like to see some more music, especially while I'm exploring the world, but the atmosphere of the game is overall perfect and matches with the music or lack thereof, depending on what you are doing. The next thing, I also played this game on PS5, so I'll give some feedback regarding that specifically. Um, the graphics are overall very good, the game runs very, very well, with very short loading times overall. To be honest, I was probably a bit spoiled going in though, because I had played Demon Souls previously, and I would have loved to see some of the features implemented from that. For example, like the DualSense features. I also understand though that that was made by Bluepoint, not actually from software directly. Um, and also that the world here is very big, and the fact that the performance doesn't really drop and the game still looks as good as it does is honestly... There's not much more I can ask for, to be honest, but I think if I if I had to make any complaints about that, I would love to see the dual sense features at least. Um, but overall, quite good on PS5. Can't really complain. Next, I also want to talk about how recently they've added content in the patches, like whole new NPCs and quest lines. And also, From Software has a very good history of adding content post-game that really helped to enhance the world. Uh, if I were to have any things I'm hoping my hoping for, anything I'm crossing my fingers for, I'm hoping for some real customization with the clothing. Um, removing the capes after having unlocked, what, two, two different needles to do so is kind of lame. And I would really like to see some coloration at least. Also, I'm really, really hoping and praying for something like Chalice Dungeons because I really want to make the content in this game truly unlimited. I also want to have some places that I can grind near endgame, and really, I think something like Chalice Dungeons could help to solve this gap currently. Okay, so now it's time for my overall um, feedback, what score I would give it. So right now, I'm at an overall 9.5 out of 10, but that's a 9.5 with an asterisk, which means it's only 9.5 in its current state. The reason I'm giving it an asterisk is, is because I believe that maybe in a year, I'll look back on this review and easily say that my complaints have been answered and it's now a perfect 10 out of 10 because it's already getting there. However, with the current state of balancing and the pigeonholing and how just how much this otherwise contrasts to the game's openness cannot be yet excused away. So the game is not perfect yet. No game truly is, but Elden Ring is pretty damn close and I can't wait to continue enjoying it now and into the future.